Hello everyone, I'm Tanin Min and today I'm going to share an amazing cosplay journey. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm from Raffles Girls School Secondary, Singapore. Being in my school's robotics club, I am very passionate about robotics. I participated in various competitions such as the National Robotics Competition and the First Lego League. I was also supposed to join this year's Robocop Rescue Line Challenge which was unfortunately cancelled. Instead, in June, I participated in the iCool Challenge and achieved second place in the Best Presentation Award. It has been an eye-opener for me and spurred me on to participate in this Cold Space Rescue First Steps Under Nighting Challenge. In this presentation, I will be focusing on how I solve the problem of inefficient random search using the five methods wall turning, coordinate targeting, differential steering, color identification, and trap avoidance. Thus, I can collect RRCCBB sets, have a smoother wall avoidance, search in smaller areas, and identify all the colors. In the end, RRCCBB sets give a higher rate of point increment, while searching smaller areas results in higher chances of collecting desired objects. Challenge Task Analysis The robot needs to get as many points as possible within 5 minutes. The mission can be broken down into 3 parts. Collection of objects, diversity of objects, and trap avoidance. First, the robot can collect red, cyan, or black objects scattered throughout the map, for us to score 10, 15, and 20 points respectively. In the middle column of the map, there is a blue special area which doubles the point score for objects collected in there. Second, the robot can only collect and store at most 6 objects, and to collect more, it needs to deposit them at these orange deposit zones. This removes all the objects stored in the robots and the point scores for the deposited objects are doubled. If there is a set of red, cyan and black objects, also known as the RC reset deposited, a bonus of 90 points is scored. If there are two sets of red, cyan and black objects, also known as the RRCCB reset deposited, a bonus of 180 points is scored. Comparing the four maximum scores of different sets deposited, Collecting RRCCBB sets gives a consistently high score. Last, the robot needs to avoid traps surrounded by yellow warning zones. If the robot enters the dark blue trap, all objects collected and the points gained from collecting them are lost. By breaking the overall mission into these smaller parts, it is half the intimidation but double the fine, and the mission becomes more solvable. AI Algorithms as you can see here, it is extremely hard for the robot to find the deposit zone when it has collected and stored 6 objects, and the robot could not collect an RRCCBB set either without wasting a lot of time. This is because I used a random search. To optimize the search, I implemented 5 AI algorithms, while turning, coordinate targeting, differential steering, color identification, and trap avoidance. First, the robot needs to avoid walls for more efficient movement throughout the map. From the iCool challenge, I was in awe with Samuel Apasuman ID SG504G's smooth wall avoidance. Thus, I programmed the robot to turn a certain rate to avoid the wall, which is inversely proportional to how close it is to the wall. The robot turns on the spot when the ultrasonic sensor reading is 0, and moves straight when the ultrasonic sensor reading is 255. Furthermore, when the left side of the robot is closer to the wall, the robot turns right as there is more space to turn. Second, the robot targets specific coordinates which contain the objects or zones needed. It turns to face the target coordinates. The angle it should be facing is calculated using tangent inverse. This helps complete the RRCC BB set as well as find the deposit zone quickly. For example, if the robot just needs two black objects, it targets two zero, and when it manages to collect them, it can target the deposit zone at two two. Third, rotation of the robot is based on the difference between the speeds of both wheels. When the speeds of both wheels are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, maximum rotation is achieved, and the robot turns on the spot. When the speed of the left wheel is greater than the speed of the right wheel, the robot turns clockwise or to the right. When the speeds of both wheels are equal in magnitude and direction, the robot moves straight. Wall turning and coordinate targeting are combined with weighted average so the robot can target a coordinate while avoiding walls. Fourth, it is very likely for the color sensors to not directly sense an object on the zone. 
I need to allow for a wide range of RGB values for each color, so that the robot can sense the color more easily without being completely on it. However, I must ensure the ranges of one color do not overlap with the ranges of another color. Therefore, I use the tree. No, not the one with leaves and the trunk, but the one whose nodes have one parent each except for the root. For example, to send black, when blue is less than 120, I check for red. When red is less than 137, I check for green. When green is less than 50, the robot is sensing a black object. Last, the robot turns away whenever it detects the yellow warning zone. Which direction it turns depends on which warning zone it is at and the direction it is facing. For example, if the robot is detecting the yellow warning zone at 00 and is facing the left, it turns anti-clockwise or to the left so that it can stay in 20. Thanks to these five algorithms, my search was way more efficient. These algorithms were mostly inspired from the IQ sharing videos. When testing out the algorithms, I mainly used repel it since I did not have a local C compiler. This is to ensure the robot would turn in the right direction and in a rate that makes sense. Afterwards, I will feed the function into my C code. I use subline text to code as it identifies syntax errors easily for me. Implementation I programmed my robot to search in two routes. The first route is to search in 10 and 11 for red and cyan objects, and then 20 for black objects. The second route is to search in the right column of the map. The robot alternates between the two routes to give time for objects to spawn and switches from one route to the other when the robot takes a very long time to color all the objects in the former route. Debugging Of course, I did have instances when my robot did not perform as intended. For example, the robot turned too much when trying to avoid the walls, which I saw by reducing the speed of both wheels during turning. Another issue was going from 1 0 to 2 0. It was hard for the robot to directly target 2 0 as there's a wall there, which I saw by making the robot target 1 1 and then 2 1 and finally 2 0. The last problem I faced was that the robot detected some colors wrongly. Thus, I made use of the sensor readings in the graphical user interface to ensure that my robot is sensing the right color. Conclusion I was very satisfied with the results my robot achieved. Initially, the robot could only average a score of 600 and collect and deposit one full set in two minutes. Due to inefficient wall avoidance and the need to search in the whole map for a particular object or zone. After implementing the strategies, the robot can average a score of 2100 and collect and deposit one RRCCBB set in one minute. Collecting RRCC BB sets is definitely a major point in booster. But the most important thing, however, is to be able to search in the coordinates which contains desired objects or zones. This narrows down the areas the robot searches in. If I were asked to solve the same challenge again, I would definitely scrape routes. You might be surprised, but I intend to focus on a slightly less fixed search, giving the robot more leeway to target more coordinates. You see, 00, zero which contains sign objects was not even visited, so it can allow my robot to collect sign objects more easily. Learning experience Despite this being my second time doing a similar challenge, I definitely learned a lot. After all, the famous Albert Einstein once said, Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. First, the closed face simulation helped me realize that there are so many sensors, such as the Java sensor, the Astronomy sensor, and even the compass. Second, the challenge has taught me many practical lessons, such as trigonometry, weighted average, and the syntax of C, as well as moral lessons, such as resilience and patience, as I could not give up easily when my algorithms do not work. To all close based participants out there, I want to tell you that fun and joy comes after hard work. So if you want to experience satisfaction from work, you have to work hard first. With that, I've come to the end of my presentation. Hold on a minute. How can I forget to thank all the people who have paved the way for my close based success? Just like how functions are the building blocks to the whole C code, my friends have played a pivotal role in my success, such as by cheering me on when I'm feeling low, as well as by running their robots alongside mine for pure enjoyment, and I thank them all so very much. A very big thank you too to my teachers and coach for giving me endless advice, as well as the course based organizers for giving me this invaluable opportunity to pit my skills against participants all over Asia Pacific. 
And that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention, and I hope to see you again in future Code Switch Challenges.